My name's Amanda Collins, and when I was 22 years old, I lived through the worst fear that I had had up until that point. What happened was that while I was a student at the University of Nevada, Reno, I was brutally raped after my night class when it finished at 10 p.m. I had um, left with a group of people because it had been ingrained in me that there is safety in numbers. And as we approached the parking garage where I, we had all parked, I was the only one who had parked on the ground floor and I surveyed the area and didn't see any visible threat between me and my vehicle. I wished my group a good week and broke off from them and headed towards my vehicle. And I quickly learned that what I hadn't seen was a man that was stuck behind the wheel well of a truck. And he grabbed me from behind, forced me to the pavement, placed a pistol to my temple. He clicked off the safety and then he raped me. At the time, I had had I already attained my concealed weapons permit. But being a law-abiding citizen, I didn't have my firearm with me. And consequently, the very law that was passed in order to ensure my safety was the very thing that guaranteed my attacker an unmatched victim. After I was attacked, like anybody else who survives trauma like that, I went on autopilot. My roommate was actually the one who reported it or contacted the detectives and they approached me and um, at that point I cooperated and, and did what I needed to in order to seek justice because my attacker had also kidnapped and raped a second woman after me and then he, he raped and murdered his last known victim. Allowing women to make the choice of how they want to defend themselves is extremely important. And the word choice is more often than not usually associated with Roe v. Wade. And I understand that not everybody is going to want to carry a firearm and I don't advocate for everyone to carry a firearm. What I advocate for is for women to be able to choose how they want to protect our bodies. We're told that we should keep the government out of our bodies and that the government has no business being in our bodies. And that's fine if you're going to take that stance. That is, you know, it is what it is, but if you're going to take that stance, then why can't we take it one step backwards and say, then let me choose how I want to defend my body before I have to make that decision. So I have recently started a new organization called Tear Speak. Tear stands for Teaching, Empowering, Assault, Rape Survivors, and it is focused to give a voice to the silent tears that a lot of survivors of rape cry and to raise social awareness and to change the, the conversation that's happening about rape and what the effects really are on its, on its victims and its survivors to hopefully be able to increase the penalty for rape and to allow women to choose how they want to defend themselves on a college campus. I can never predict how sharing my story is going to affect me day to day. Some days I can um, disengage a little bit and just act as though I'm telling a story and kind of be not fully present. And, and then other days it really just kind of knocks me down and um, makes it difficult to just do day to day life. I would never say that it gets easier. I just think that as individuals we get stronger as time goes by. And what makes it worth it is looking at my three beautiful girls and realizing that I want to create a different world for them where they don't have to go to college campuses and worry about whether or not they can protect their bodies or worry about how they're going to be treated if something atrocious happens to them.